What kind of players carry Kittles, Danny? Kerry Kittles is an excellent player. He did a nice job in the Milwaukee series. Made a lot of key shots down the stretch. But he, too, he's a great transition player. And he also does a good job of, of spotting up off of the penetration and post-ups of Kidd and Martin. It's Martin for two outside. Yeah. Well, he hits outside like that, John. A lot of things open up for New Jersey's offense. Well, and I'm sure the Celtics would prefer him to take that shot as opposed to going inside. But he's starting to get a lot more confidence in his outside shot. But if I want him to take a shot, I'd rather him see him see him do that than to get on the board. Excellent defense by Kenyon Martin, and Pierce just made a tough shot. A little one-on-one -on -one here, Pierce, now the double, and a nice steal by Kerry Kittles, and here is what New Jersey does so well. Kittles to Kenyon Martin. Well, that's why it's very important for the Celtics to make the shots they take and protect the ball and don't give the next steals, because if they steal, they're going to run. There was a 10-0 run to begin the game by Boston. Now a 6-0 run for New Jersey. Trying to go inside. McCarty picks up his first foul for the Celtics. This is what you got to love about New Jersey. I mean, they haven't had any. Boston's playing great. The second they get a ball, Boston is determined to get back, but they just can't run fast enough to get back and stop a dunk. They're not just getting open shots. They'll get, they'll get dunks off fast breaks. Well, that puts a lot of pressure on your shooting if you know a team's going to run like the Nets do, so you're so afraid to miss because you know Here's they're going to take off. And trying to capitalize on New Jersey's first turnover tonight, it's Antoine Walker to go. And chipping his way in, got the matchup he wants with Martin and the rebound by Jefferson of New Jersey. Down court, Martin at the other end. Well, see, that's just terrible defense because the Celtics left early to come back, but everybody watched the ball and didn't watch the lane. Martin just got behind the defense and got a dunk. Yeah, visually, everybody can't focus on the ball. You claim the ball. Kenyon Martin leads New Jersey with six, and Walter McCarty with a couple threes leads Boston with six points so far. Oh, we look right here. Paul Pierce is right there, but he doesn't think Jason's going to throw it over the top of him. Well, Danny began the game by saying this is the fastest team in the NBA, and they show it early here in the Meadowlands. That was a great shot, but I like it. They got the shot off the passing and movement of the ball rather than off the dribble and isolations. Twice off of dribble and isolations, they haven't got anything out of it. We go inside to Kenyon Martin as another great pass was sent in from on top from Jason Kidd. The foul goes on Tony Batista. Which he says it's going to relax him for the series, guys. At the free throw line, Kenyon Martin knocks down his first, and he is shooting 75% in these playoffs, and he ties the game at 13 apiece. Well, Kenyon Martin is such a force. They come out of the timeout. Excellent design by Byron Scott. Just a high-low pass. Jason Kidd to Kenyon Martin against the front and, and exploited the fronts that the Celtics put on the low post. Game high eight now, John, for Martin. And Rodney's a good basketball player, but he doesn't have near the athleticism, offensive rebounding ability, or fast break potential of Kenyon Martin, and he's not as good a defender. There's a foul on Collins of New Jersey as he tries to throw a hip into Paul Pierce, and that is the second on Collins, so big man foul problems. Now the concern for New Jersey. Well, you see J Jersey getting off and getting down. Uh, one of the things that you want to do, you want to steal the ball, you want to get it off a of rebound. Every time they've gotten a stolen ball, they've been able to get down before the Celtics. This one is off of a rebound. You kick it out, you get back. The Celtics get back, but they don't identify the immediate danger. What a great pass by Jason Kidd on that last one, though. He didn't even, he just knew in the back of his head uh, where Kenyon Martin was. French Finals on TNT. Because that's going to stop you from fast breaking. Celtics with Walker, Batie, McCarty, Pierce, and Tony Dunn to begin the second half here in the Meadowlands. Kenyon Martin with three fouls. He is scoring. He is playing well. He is the first net to get in double figures. But the three fouls have curtailed his game. All right. Well, he's got 10 points. He's only played just over 10 minutes, 11 minutes now. now. he's got 10. And Boston has three in double figures. And Kittles is feeling it. Walker. Be patrolling down low defensively and meet Martin head on. That doesn't stop Kenyon Martin. That was like an eight foot left handed <laughs> finger roll up off the glass. That was a spectacular <laughs> shot by Martin. You couldn't tell whether it was an afterthought or a conscientious effort on his part, but he made it, and that's the most important thing. So Walker right there on the steamroll as New Jersey has started the second half four of four. Rebounding edge is five now for New Jersey in this game. And that's a better shot. You know, I mean, he made the one before was a, a low percentage shot. I mean, that's a good shot. And uh, that would have been huge if he could have made that. Take this crowd out for a while. They got Matino now on Martin. They did this on the of the season. But Martin still exploits the matchup and puts it in. And Kenyon Martin has put in six in this third quarter. Kerry Kittle 
Rutgers has put in nine. They have scored all 15 New Jersey points in the third. And that's where the Celtics do not want Kenyon Martin to have an opportunity to take a shot. They would prefer him take the deep jump shots, which he's doing a good job on, but they do not want him in that close to the basket because he's so quick to get him back, even getting the second shot on a rebound. The team picks up the foul. Danny, what about the change now for Tion Martin as opposed to uh, Antoine Walker? Well, Petit is their best low post defender. He's got longer, better athleticism than Walker. He's knocked in four three-point shots. And they still won't guard him. I mean, right there, again, moving to center, they, they relying on their center to help on Paul Pierce and Antoine Walker. And then you might bench that baby home, man. The Nets again by 10. You know, that's the shot that they say they want Kenya Martin to take, but I think you're going to have to reevaluate that if he becomes as consistent as he's becoming with his outside shoot. 17 for Martin. That is a New Jersey guy. You're watching the playoffs on TNT. It's really consistency on the part of the officials, too, because it's almost very simple pushing off. One offensively and one is defensively. Kim, screen by Collins. Slashing inside, wipe it away, foul called on Kenny Martin at the New Jersey Nets. And that is his fifth personal foul. He has the most fouls of any net, five, and Tony Petit also is five for Boston. Well, what a beautiful play by Walter McCarty. Rotates out there, sees him coming to him again, because Kenny Martin is not the shooter that I think he's developing into. Great play by Walter McCarty. Both teams, two of seven, shooting from the floor in this fourth quarter as they bring back in Rodney Rogers. Let's Martin. get inside some strategy here, Danny. First for New Jersey. Well, New Jersey's, they usually try to run the bump screens. You know, try to get Kerry Kittles or Jason Kidd with the ball in his hand making a play. Kenyon Martin has been their go-to guy down on the low poles. Danny talks about him. John, what about, New Jersey, about the Boston Celtics? Well, I think they want to do what they have been doing. you got to not give up the easy shots, but you want to cut the penetration out and clog the lane up. It's blocked by Antoine Walker as Martin went up. Well, we saw a little bit of everything. We saw the bump play, we saw pick and roll by Jason, and we saw Kenyon Martin down on the low post to finish the clock, but a good foul right here. Walker is out of the game, fouling out. Well, and that shows Martin's athleticism. He just went up so hard and so strong. The Celtics were trying to cut the middle off, as I had indicated, but in the same token, Martin is so quick, he got there so quickly that they had the game, foul. Antoine Walker, 6-20. Kenny Martin will be at the free throw line for the New Jersey Nets. Three of three with his 17 points. Walker in these playoffs, 75% from the strike. Well, not near the offensive threat, but T coming back in the game for Walker, but a better offensive rebounder. So you got the four floor sped with four three-point shooters and offensive players, and Petit is there for the offensive board. No fouls to give either way in the final 45 seconds of regulation. You see, Martin's been on the bench for a while right yes, now, he too. He's probably a little cold right now. He's got to get back into the floor of the game. Boston has a timeout. New Jersey's got two. Two-point game. Oh, and that's the thing that you like Kenyon Martin about, too, is the fact that he's going to be around that ball late game situation. He got in position to get an opportunity to be fouled. We didn't see the real Kenyon Martin in this game, and we haven't seen him. I mean, he was in foul trouble, took him out early in the half, but he is a warrior, and he was dominant against Milwaukee. And he's one of those guys that, got, that has presence. If you don't see him, you're looking for him all the time. J.R. Brennan will check in for the Boston Celtics as both Walker and Petit have fouled out. And here is Martin at the free throw line, 4 of 5 with his net high 18 points. And what's really important is you got a small lineup out there. You've got Walter McCarty and Eric Williams under the under the basket, and you want Martin to miss his shot, but if he does, you know, you better make sure you get this defensive board. Well, the Celtics are putting, I mean, the Nets are putting perimeter defenders in, too, probably thinking the Celtics are going for a three, taking out Collins, who's done a great job, and putting in Harris, a guy that can make, make the switches and do the things that he has to do out there. Boston does not need to score a three. They want to save their time. Or seven or six seconds even left. Now they miss one free throw, and that's plenty of time to push the ball up the court. And you don't even need a three had he missed the one free throw if they had scored two. 
And particularly when they were in a three point defense, you're absolutely correct. That's the only disadvantage to it. It leaves you vulnerable for drives. But having said that, Paul Pierce got a pretty darn good look at the three. And having said it, they were successful with it, so it must have been the right strategy, I guess. Kenny Martin. Boston is out of timeouts. And trailing by four. A pretty big advantage of plus 14 on the glass by New Jersey, led by the 21 points of Kenyon Martin. They got nine rebounds. A break then sends you to San Antonio as you watch the NBA playoffs on TNT. In round two, it was Boston at New Jersey in a rematch of last year's Eastern Conference Finals. And early on, the Nets had the Celtics on the run. Up at the other end. So much for getting four guys back in transition. I tell you what, Paul Pierce is a great shooter, that's obvious, but he's even more of a great basketball player now. Collins missing, tap in try by Martin, throws it, rips it, and tried to jam it. That just, was fouled inside. Just Pierce, nasty. Along with uh, McCarty in his wake underneath. Well, the offensive rebound. He's had a great first half. And Blunt has done a great job You're adding to that defense by blocking the shots. I think definitely you're right. He's made a contribution. Both teams now have taken eight free throw attempts tonight. And here comes Paul Pierce. The unstoppable Paul Pierce who takes it inside again, giving you a different move with every part of his body. A three on two. Kid, hold it. Buckle up. Because flight six is cleared for landing. What a play. Nine points for Kenyon Martin and a spectacular assist by New Jersey's Jason Kidd. And when Jason got the ball, everybody was so concerned about him. Somebody has to go find Richard Jefferson and Kenyon Martin as they're flying down the court and get a body on them. Take your eyes off of Jason. Shot clock will be at a second. Pretty good defense right there. It's like a defensive back running back the court. You got to guard the receivers. Oh, he's, looking, have... he's looking left and throws it up there. Picture perfect on the right side. Oh, it was a spectacular play oh. by Jason Kidd. But where's the defensive backs? Well, in that's elementary school basketball. You stop the ball. You point to immediate danger. You start to pick up people. You don't just run down. All right, Cheryl, he's going to go to the Olympic qualifying team. New Jersey comes back with plays like this. Kid looking one way and tossing at the other for the high-flying Kenyon Martin. The emotion is high as New Jersey tries to build a two games to none lead on Antoine Walker and the Boston Celtics. Early an exciting game two here in the Meadowlands as we send it to you in our studio. Rebound by Kidd. That's an ugly hook. There was. Here comes New Jersey. 46% from the floor shooting tonight. The Nets got so much off of their defense just before the half, but now they're coming back. Nice shot by Kenyon Martin, and for the game, 11 points, five rebounds. You know, Ken Martin has been a good player since he came into this league, but he just gets better and better and better. That kind of work ethic and that mental toughness, he's going to be a star very soon. From the Continental Airlines Arena, Bremer. I'm sorry, you can see the difference right there off the steal of Mark Blunt and the New Jersey Nets. When they get a steal, they're looking for, I mean, there was like three guys waiting for an outlet pass. In New Jersey, there it is, one. on a made basket. And inside, count the two. Mark Plum finds it inside. I even talked over Kevin's opportunity to say he saw a man fly, but against a basket, that is just pitiful tra transition defense right there after a made basket. Well, one of the things the Celtics are doing, they're getting back quickly. They put the emphasis on stopping the break, but they're not identifying the immediate danger as they come back. They're not stopping the ball. They aren't spreading out and picking up the wings. Well, the immediate danger is everywhere. Jason Kidd with the ball. Kenyon Martin on the wing. Kerry Kittle's pulling up from three. There, there's immediate danger all over the court with Jason Kidd has the ball in his hands. Around every corner, up every alley. That's what makes New Jersey so difficult here in the East. And New Jersey led by Kidd. Shooting 65% from the field in that quarter. It's come now to crunch time for Boston. They are staring eye to eye with being down in this series two games to none. And I realize the clock was going down, but that's a great guy to have shoot it when the clock's going down. Well, why, not shoot it from the, why not shoot it from the top of the key? Why would you backpedal when you can't shoot a three? Slapped away by McCarty. Vacuumed in by Cody. Somehow gets it off to Martin. 
And it's fouled on the play. What a great play. <laughs> <laughs> That's a foul on Petit for the fourth time. But Martin's so aggressive with his hands. And Kidd, he goes down on the ground right here, saves it from going out of bounds. Goes after it again, finds it creatively, yeah. rolls it, playing That's... marbles down there. <laughs> <laughs> to just have presence of mind to go for a loose ball like that, but yet still be able to identify a receiver while you're going for a loose ball is, is not as easy as it looks. Free throw shooting tonight. Both teams have missed four from the line. 16 of 20 for the Nets. 15 of 19 for the visiting Celtics. Both defenses have to be focused on their stars right now. If you're the Celtics, you've got to be cognizant of where Jason Kidd. If, if you are not the Celtics, you've got to be very conscious of where Paul Pierce is because he, this is where these guys get their salaries. Right at this time of the game and this time of the playoffs. Martin again. Well, five points with six and a half minutes to go. Jim O'Brien has decided to go with his offensive game. I never game. felt that the home crowd was important until the last four or five minutes of a game. I think too many players say, oh, we're going home now, and think that that's going to change it. Their play's got to change it, and then the crowd can get into it and help them pull them through down the stretch. Martin aggressively down the lane for two. Well, that's when he's dangerous. Martin's coming towards the basket attacking because he's so quick as a jumper. If he misses his shot, he can go back. I'd rather see him do that than take outside shot. I, I read in almost every one of their quotes, we're coming home now instead of what we have to do now to change this series around. And no one was talking about the rebounding. To me, as much as the transition defense is important, the rebounding numbers are just staggering. They've got to be on the board to have a chance to get enough shots up at the basket to win. Out rebounded John by five Wednesday and by 14 Monday with the Celtics to New Jersey. You know, that's the thing that will get you killed because if you're giving them transition baskets and you can't rebound the ball, particularly at the defensive end, not only are you giving up transition baskets, you're giving them putbacks. New Jersey is on an eight to nothing run. From TNT and Sprite, a thirst for winning, Kenyon Mark. He's one of the most tenacious young defensive players in the league. And his incredible shot blocking and rebounding ability proves he has an unstoppable thirst for a return to the NBA Finals. The 2003 NBA Playoffs. The drama continues on TNT. See if Kenyon Martin will win or go home. Brought to you by Sprite. Obey your thirst. His talent at hand this year. Hell, he's been a magician. When you look at this team, it's overachieved. It definitely is overachieved. Williams a screen. Anthony Johnson a wide open. Kenyon Martin. And Martin puts it in. He's got six points, four rebounds, and an assist. Martin had 14 and 10 on Wednesday and exploded on Monday with 21 and six rebounds. If he can hit that shot, that's bad news for a lot of people. Paul Pierce with the rebound. Boston is on a 12 to 4 run right now. Walker for three. Wow. His shot is nowhere to be found. He's three of ten. At the other end, Kenyon Martin for New Jersey. Too often in transition, Boston is caught in no man's land. The point guard is like a free safety in football. No one behind you. And Tony Delk's not getting all the way back. He's getting back to the three-point line. And here's another thing that's changed in the NBA in my estimation. It used to be when you struggled on offense, you made up for it on defense. Nowadays, players, if they struggle on offense, they also struggle on defense. Elio Kidd looking for Martin, who on takeoff was held down. And it was aborted. And a Boston foul. It's on Pierce, and now Paul Pierce has three personal fouls for the Celtics. Well, that's good news uh, for the Nets, but this is an example of what Coach was talking about, the free safety. The back man is not recognizing the immediate danger. The defender is afraid and afraid to, to go with it. Walker is at the line because Paul Pierce was just tagged with his third personal foul. And now 6 of 14 free throw shooting for the Nets. A little at, bump right there, a little brush. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> he took a little acting class somewhere. He must have. Martin with eight points, five rebounds. And now he's got nine points. That is an and New Jersey how we start the second half with Boston down. And New Jersey with the ball. They've got Kidd, Kittles, Kenyon Martin, Collins, and Jefferson out there. And Kenyon Martin begins it just that way. He's got 11 points, which leads New Jersey in scoring. Yeah, the Celtics just, they, they, they need something good to happen to them in bunches. 
Here's Paul Pierce, who has started four of 11. Tony Batiste. That's something good for the Nets. Tony Batiste taking shots out there. Kid in mid stride. Kenyon Martin slams it down. He's got 13. Well, that's not a good sign either because you come down, you get an easy basket like that. Then you have an opportunity to set up the pressure if you're the Nets. Now, New Jersey has started this second half three of three from the field. It's a pretty play to watch, isn't it? When they go inside on a kid pass, it's Pierce from point blank range can't get it. Three on three, kid to the trailing Martin once again. He slams it down. And now, New Jersey. Trailing by 13 points. And New Jersey. Rather, Boston trailing by 13 points. New Jersey equals their biggest lead tonight. And New Jersey smells blood, too, right now. They want to try to close this thing out as much as they can because they don't want to give uh, the Southeast Illinois emotional inspiration like they did in the first half. And you'll watch the transition defense right here. The great push by. And there you see. Walker's pointing at Kenny Martin. He's got to run to him. I hate that in transition. You take mine. I'm not going to make the effort to run back. Everybody's got to have that commitment to run back. Kittle's going inside. He was met by Delk and Batie. And Batie picks up his third foul. And this is a little bit better. You see the sprint by Antoine Walker. They bottle Kid up. But here comes Kenyon Martin, who's trailing in hard again. Outnumbered, four on three, a great point guard like Jason Kidd, he's going to find the open man. Well, the thing that the Celtics have constantly done is they emphasize getting back, but they're not recognizing where the immediate danger. You stop the ball, you fan out, you pick up people. In transition defense, you don't have the luxury of picking up the man you are assigned to. You have to pick up danger. New Jersey comes the other way, Jeff, shooting 54% from the field. And again, I think we're, we're all analyzing it correctly that New Jersey's dominated the game and yet are only up nine points. So all Boston needs is a good run, but it starts down here at this end. And getting stopped, and they're not doing it right now. And that is a foul. It's on Petit, and he has picked up his fourth. Sometimes good offense beats even better defense. But that's in your eyes, for sure, Ken. Is that right between the eyes? <laughs> that's it, right between the eyes. <laughs> Martin at the line. Team fouls in this third quarter. Boston's got four, New Jersey none, as Petit will check out. And third year, seven foot pit center, Tony Delk for two. Rebound by Jason Kidd, who shifts gears and feeds to Kittles, who will joust with newly instated Eric Williams of Boston. Elliot for Kenyon Martin with a sensational pass by Jason Kidd. Well, that's the difference in the two teams right there. I mean, that guy is just so good that everybody looks better. It's like when you played with Jordan in Chicago, all those guys look better than they truly were. Here, kid makes everyone look so good. Killing you softly with my pass. That's what he says. Oh, my goodness. Kid again. A foul called on Paul Pierce of Boston. And Pierce is tagged with his fourth foul of the game. That's not good news. Jason Kidd has eight assists. Kenyon Martin with a game high, 18 points for New Jersey. And you see this great pass by Kidd on the lob. It looks easy, but that is precise. Right on time, right on target. An easy catch by Martin for the finish and the dunk. Another breathtaking play by New Jersey. They've led the entire way up now, 63-51. Martin <laughs> might as well stop in his own fast break. <laughs> That's good. The number one assist man in the regular season in the NBA, Jason Kidd, 8.9 a game, winning the title, first net ever. Kenyon Martin nails one from outside. That's a bad message that he's sending. If he starts doing that, he and Jefferson definitely have expanded their game. Martin's got 11 in this third quarter alone. That was great defense by Boston again. Better offense by Martin. On the pull what I love about the Nets in the playoffs compared to the regular season is they're showing great toughness on the road. This regular season, they were only 16 and 25 on the road. But in the playoffs, they are playing extremely tough-minded, very aggressive basketball on the road. 
Kenyon Martin has been a one-man highlight show tonight. And this is just in this third quarter where he has put in 11 points, part of his 20 points tonight. Going up high, scoring inside and out. A concern for Jim O'Brien, the Boston coach, and his superstar, Paul Pierce. It's the Nets by 17. And that takes us to the end of the third quarter. The Boston Celtics already trail in this series two games to none. The Nets are out shooting them from the floor and playing a magnificent game three. It's the Nets 76 56 over Boston. We're down by 20 as we go to the fourth quarter tonight. If lightning strikes a second time, I'll pay you, coach. How much? And as much as we remember that game, the Nets also remember it. And that's one of the reasons why they're going to try to prevent that from happening. And they send Eric Williams inside, and he draws the foul. That's number four on him. Eric Williams picks up four. There's not a single player in the game with five. Jeff brings you up to date on some foul problems. And here at the free throw line is Kenyon Martin. 30 to 8, 30 to 8 from the free throw line yep. in attempts. I mean, that's, that's really something. And too many times I think teams look at the discrepancy of free throws as biased officiating. This has nothing to do with that. One team, New Jersey's taking the ball at the basket in transition in half court, and the other team is a spot up jump shooting team. Both teams play to their talent level. But New Jersey's an attacking team. Ryan Divac has got to step up and become a more of an offensive factor because they're going to need that post score. Nice rebound on the kid missed by Martin. New Jersey is shooting 51%, and Boston is shooting 34% from the field in the game. Kid. Williams. And loses here. Shot clock is down to six for Kenny Martin. He's had a very good night shooting the ball. He's got 22 points, 9 of 11 from the field. Well, and done a heck of a defensive job also. I mean, his intensity in getting Walker upset is very key in this game as much as it's The thing that you've got to respect about Jason Kidd, though, is that you never see any nonsense or foolishness regardless of what the score is. The focus, the intensity, the execution remains the same if he's 7 down or 7 up or 10 down or 10 up. Kenny Martin making it home. Martin may have just put the dagger in the Celtics with his 10 of 12 night from the floor. And is game high 25 points for New Jersey. I didn't expect this. I don't think anybody did, except New Jersey. The Nets have marched into Boston and have taken no prisoners, and they will force Boston into an elimination game on Monday. Buzzsawing the Celtics tonight, 90 to 66. A terrific start being very aggressive at both ends four rebounds to go along with the seven points so this Celtic team at this point has no inclination that they want to pick it up for the summer here's Kenyon Martin from the perimeter and Martin with his first basket of the game that's where he and Jefferson have really improved the ability to knock down the medium range jump shot on a consistent basis which gives them more driving opportunities Boston by one, and that's just not going to get it done. They had careless turnovers in games two and three of this series. They'll try to deny Kidd, and here is Kenyon Martin hitting his second in a row. So Martin taking advantage of the extra time after practices to sharpen his shooting eye, and it's paid off for him. And now Jim O'Brien wants to talk it over as two Kenyon Martin baskets giving the Nets the one-point lead again. From DNT and Sprite, a thirst for winning, Kenyon Mark. He's one of the most tenacious young defensive players in the league. And his incredible shot blocking and rebounding ability proves he has an unstoppable thirst for a return to the NBA Finals. The 2003 NBA Playoffs. The drama continues on TNT. See if Kenyon Martin will win or go home. Brought to you by Sprite. Obey your third. Coming into this game, and the Celtics are up by one, 
crowd got a little dip for a while. Now they're back into it. With 3.20 to go, Martin inside is fouled as Blunt tried to defend him and get a piece of the ball. Walker has scored 14 points. Kenyon Martin trying to give the Nets the lead again if he can make these two free throws. Want to remind you, game six tomorrow in the West on TNT. And so Walker, who just picked up his third foul on the double foul. And the Nets now lead at 71-69. And again, that's inexcusable. That's inexcusable to give up a transition basket after a foul. And that will do it, ending the third quarter with the Nets up by two. Kenyon Martin with his defensive performances. Tonight only seven points and four rebounds, but getting a job done on the defensive end. So after three here at the Fleet Center, the Nets trying to win four in a row over the Celtics are leading Boston 71-69. Even though Kenyon Martin had, has not had his best statistical night, he's an energy and an effort player. They're taking the lob from Lucius Harris and then coming over with great weak side help and erasing a sure two by Mark Blount. Kenyon Martin, as much as kid, is the pulse of the New Jersey Nets because of his athleticism, energy, and commitment to defense. Former number one draft pick. In the entire draft out of the University here is that key with the one-hander on the turnaround. Rodgers, the rebound. Rodney Rodgers with Kidd, Martin, Aaron Williams, and Lucius Harris. And there is Kenyon Martin hitting the jumper. And the Nets right now showing the same kind of play they used against Milwaukee when they had a chance to wrap it up on the road in the hit in time. He's got Kittles, Martin, Collins, and Jefferson the starting five. Under three minutes. Martin with the one-hander. And the rebound, follow-up, cuts the lead to two. And Boston has gone small with the T being injured. They've gone with Walker as their center, McCarty as their power forward. It's going to be very difficult to, for them to protect the basket. And the foul is made, and right now the Nets trying to take over the defensive force of this game from the Celtics. The foul is on Kerry Kittles, his fourth. And here Martin does a good job Dribble drive, shoots a little floater, and then got a great quick second jump and finishes it off with a dunk to cut the lead for Boston to two. But the penetration created the second shot for Collins. And the Nets looking to tie it up or take the lead. Here's Martin. And Eric Williams banging, and Kenyon Martin with all his toughness ties it up at 88. So this has been a terrific net comeback. 1.20 to go, they were down by eight. Again, Eric Williams a little too small for Kenyon Martin in the post. That's gonna be a difficult cover for him. And a timeout called by Jim O'Brien. As the Nets with a 10 to do run have quieted this crowd. 1.11 remaining. That's how far the Nets are from a sweet Celtics Need a victory to keep this thing going. And we are back at the Fleet Center, headed for overtime. The Nets had the last possession of the game. It was stripped away. The Celtics did not call timeout. So we go to a five-minute extra session in this game four. I think both teams have to be very pleased with their game four performances. Byron Scott, his team could have taken the game off. They've come to put away the Celtics, and Jim O'Brien has gotten a great response, and a lot of pride has been shown by his team here tonight. That's one and two in overtime, 0-1 in the playoffs. Celtics three and two, 0-1 in the playoffs. And here is Kidd to Martin. Basket counts and a foul. A quick basket and a chance for an early three-point lead in OT. How good is Jason Kidd off the tap, knowing that Martin's ahead of the field? Touch pass. That's just a tremendous play. And the point that Delka's got to make sure, just like in transition defense, on the tip, he's got responsibility for protecting the basket. 
And the foul was on Eric Williams. Mark Blount is in the game with uh, Williams, Delk, Pearson Walker. And Kenyon Martin giving the Nets a three-point lead. Three seconds into the overtime session. They know they may not get back there for game seven. Walter McCarty replacing Antoine Walker for the Celtics who fouled out. 2.45 to go. The lead is two for Boston. Collins with a great feed into Kittles. Reverse layup and Martin follows and it's tipped in. Kenyon Martin with a tremendous, relentless play. Inside has 18 and ties the game at 95. A great backdoor cut by Kittles and then a great second jump by Martin. Tip this and then back up to finish it off. Out of bounds and it's last touch by the Nets. Great pass by Collins on the back cut to Kidd and then Martin comes flying in there, misses and then back up for a second jump. Could have been offensive interference. The ball looked like they're still in the center. And I think Byron Scott with a great substitution to get more shooting on the floor with Rodney Rogers for Collins. Spreads the floor and makes the pick and roll harder to defend. And Kenyon Martin with the jump shot. Martin ties it up at 97 with 54 plus remaining in this overtime session. They were tied at 90 going into the overtime. And we're tied again in Sacramento the other night. So at their advanced age, you're getting a little tuckered out. Maybe we'll get a little extra pay from the NBA office. And maybe we'll have three more overtimes. Who knows? Here is Jefferson to Kenyon Martin. And Martin gets the basket on the pick and roll. Martin now with 22. And the Nets lead by five. As uh, the air is uh, starting to be let out of this uh, Celtic balloon. And uh, the crowd as well at this point. The Nets have been unstoppable, sweeping the Celtics in round two. Go away. But, you know, we got a great group of guys here. We all cheer for each other. We all want, you know, everybody to be successful. And, uh, you know, we don't care who puts the ball in the basket as long as the bottom line is that we win. Conference Finals, Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC Sports, home of the NBA Finals. Yeah.